There are two ways of being pro-business. You can be pro-market, in which you're trying to create an environment in which companies that are productive and innovative can thrive. Um, or you can be crony capitalist, in which you're picking winners and losers. Um, and the success or failure of a company depends on whether you're on the president's good side or the bad side. And unfortunately, all too often, um, many of his tweets and even some of his policies have tended towards the latter. So, you know, that could be good for a business that has good political connections, uh, good lobbyists, but not necessarily for the overall economy. Well, but when, when you use the phrase crony capitalism, it suggests that there is some sort of quid pro quo that, that, that the administration gets something in return for you know, behaving the way uh, the president would like them to do. Here, I don't see that so, necessarily so in so that that's standard sort of the, definition. So that's sort of the strong definition. Let me mm -hmm. let me say that there, you know, I've spent a, uh, a lot of time in Asia, and and there are economies that work based on corruption that way. But there are also economies that it's it's about picking certain companies that you want to uh, that you want you want to win, and others because they cross you politically uh, that you want to lose. And and you know, I don't mean to imply corruption. Uh, what I mean to say mm -hmm. is that politics trumps the market. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Jim Pethokoukas, let's talk about that. In these cases, it feels to me like there is, uh, there is a principle standing behind this, uh, many of the fights that he has picked with, with these companies, and I think his base probably uh, appreciates it, even if the executive suite does not. Um, so talk about that and talk about what the reaction would be if a president named Obama were doing the same thing. Well, well the reaction among... Uh, Republicans, as they would probably call Obama, certainly a crony capitalist uh, uh, at minimum, uh, and they would probably call him a central planner, a Marxist, or something uh, on the other end of the scale. Uh, this, the, the, pre the, the president's principle, I think, is one, uh, to say good things uh, about companies that probably say good things about him, seem to, seem to be investing in the U.S., uh, seem to be helping American workers. Now. That's some American workers. Uh, some people will benefit from his trade policies. Uh, companies that make steel may benefit, but there's going to be far more losers. And when we talk about picking winners and losers, the president has picked sort of companies and workers that sort of appeal to his economic nostalgia, whether or not that's most workers, and it won't be most workers, but will seem to be a, a core group of workers that he's interested in or he believes forms his base, and it's that kind of soft crony capitalism that we're seeing. It's really interesting, Jimmy. So Courtney just reported on the Brown Foreman price hikes overseas. So this is American whiskey, American Harley Davidson motorcycles. I mean, we're also potentially waiting for announcements from the peanut butter companies and the blue jean companies, which are also targeted by places like the EU because they're trying to get to the politically sensitive states, or even if they don't admit that, that's what's happening. The question is, is this disconnect going to continue where the companies in those states get hurt as a result of the tariffs, but the voters and Trump's base support him? Listen, I, th listen, I think... Uh, if we, we're going to start hearing more stories, as I said, there's going to be a far more losers. And in every sort of local newspaper and local news, you're going to hear more stories uh, about that company that makes the nails. Uh, you know, the small local manufacturer that their, their steel prices have gone way up and they've had to lay off 60 workers. Uh, you're going to hear more about the Harley Davidsons and those stories as they start trickling down and that trickle becomes sort of a, a flood of these companies complaining. I think that's going to have an impact, even if it doesn't necessarily show up. Uh, in the GDP numbers, because the economy has a lot of momentum right now. Patrick, your re your reaction there? Do you think there are going to be a lot of losers as a result of uh, this trade uh, competition? Yes, I think there can be, and I think it's the reason why markets have been flat in the United States uh, and, and globally uh, since the beginning of the year. Even though we've seen some very good economic numbers in the United States. Um, by by those numbers, the markets should be doing much better. And when we look at things like the uh, the bond yield curve uh, flattening out, and mm -hmm. even by some measures globally inverting, which would suggest a potential recession. I mean, what the market's telling us is that yes, there's some a lot of momentum that we see currently, uh, but uh, but there are a lot of things that the market's seeing that could disrupt them. And I think right. trade is is high on the list of things that could even bring this cycle to an end if it's not handled right.
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.